A year of life as an Eskimo among Eskimos had a profound influence upon the development of my views because it led me away from my former interests and towards the desire to understand what determines the behavior of human beings. In 1883, a young German scientist called Franz Boas arrived here in the Canadian Arctic. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. He came here to do two things. He'd originally done part of his training in geography, and he was going to map as much of the coastline, which was pretty much uncharted in those days, as possible. He was also going to indulge his new interest, the study of culture. The year before he came up here, he'd been reading up as much as possible about the Arctic. But unlike most explorers, he'd also bothered to take some courses in the local language in Uktitut. He arrived at Kirkerton Island, just over that hill, which was run by a whaler called James Much. It was a thriving station at the time, and in fact the largest Inuit settlement in the area. James Much made caribou clothing for Boaz and his servant, William Vike, and outfitted them with a team of dogs. In the course of the 12 months he was up here, Boaz traveled something like 3,000 miles on foot, by boat, and on sleds like this. The work he was to do up here was eventually to change the direction of his own life, but it was also to change the way we think about other cultures and the way we think about ourselves. In his months on Baffin Island, Boaz was to complete the first accurate survey of Cumberland Sound and Davis Strait, a considerable piece of Arctic exploration in itself. But today, the trip is better remembered for his observations of Eskimo life. <laughs> 